What's up, people? I hope you're all doing well. I am a little bit unwell. You can say that because of this. So during my last ride, I dropped the bike, and obviously my wrong practice of picking up the bike led to a small sprain. I got an X-ray. Uh, the lab technician said there's a hairline fracture. The doctor said there isn't. But it's been about five days, and I still have some pain, a little bit of swelling. But uh, otherwise, it's all fine. I can move my fingers. I can ride. So it's all good. And what's awesome is this. I'm riding my Karadzma after 65 days, <laughs> 18, almost 20 years now. I have had this motorcycle, and uh, two months of riding that. KTM 390 Adventure and this feels so small. <laughs> It really feels so small. The handlebars in that are like you know the wide angle of an action camera, whereas this is more like the linear. But yeah, this feels so small and so manageable. And the low end torque is so much that I can just keep cruising in one gear for so long. The engine is butter smooth, butter smooth. After ninety-seven thousand kilometers, and on standard bore, wow, this is this is awesome. The nice feeling riding my Karuzma after so long. You know what's funny is the KTM. It came on the fourth of June. Okay, it's exactly sixty-five days now. So the morning of fourth of June, I took the Karuzma to my studio. Thought I'll just wash it and uh, pack it off because I knew that once the KTM would come, I would not touch this for a few days. And strangely though, I started the bike in the morning with the self starter, and it started fine. After five kilometers, the battery just dies. Well, it still works. I mean, unlike the modern bikes, this has a kicker, so you can start the bike and still ride it. But what's strange is that, I mean, what are the odds that it had to happen on the same day? It's like you know, the bike kind of knew, Karuzma kind of knew that there is something else coming home, <laughs> or maybe I'm just relating things and making it sound a little spooky. Whatever. 65 days later, you will see the visuals of how the bike was covered with dust. and because the battery had died i was feeling a little lazy to change the battery and then uh start riding this but yeah anyway so today was the day got a new battery everything works fine headlights tail lamps indicators horn speedometer everything works I okay, listen to the way it starts. Just one touch. That's it. In most one touch uh, start stop buttons, you press them and the motor cranks and cranks and cranks and then starts. Whereas in this, it's just one touch and it starts. Maybe not all the time because my carburetor is quite old and sometimes it acts nasty. Let's try that again. Ready? That's it. Start it. <laughs> the 
this feels weightless not that the ktm 390 adventure is heavy but this is this is feather weight you can just flick it around however you want i mean there was a time i used to feel this had really wide handlebars but after riding the ktm i think this is small and this seat height is so low i can flat foot on both the sides and with the ktm no i'm 58 and i'll have to tip toe on the adventure whereas on this flat foot i think these bikes were the older bikes were made with a different quality mindset look at these mirrors they are stock they are the same mirrors that came with this motorcycle 20 years back and just look at how sturdy it is you know it just stays where you leave it unlike some of the modern motorcycles where you know a couple of potholes later the mirrors looking skywards or i don't know hellwards even the switch gear you know it's all stock there is nothing that has changed on this bike except yeah the mudguard and the cowl section of the the rare three pieces of the bodywork because they tend to break on charisma so everything else is original i mean look at this tank i still have the sticker that came with the motorcycle from the factory it's all original paint and what do you guys think of the analog part analog part digital cluster i love it i love analog it's just so much more uh engaging it's so much more dramatic you know the way the needle actually climbs as compared to the digital ones horn works indicators work everything works there's nothing on this bike that will not work as i mentioned earlier this is still still running on the standard bore and um, it's on about 97000 kilometers on the record but there have been times when uh you know when the battery dies the speedometer doesn't work so it hasn't recorded a few thousand kilometers so unofficially yeah this has crossed a lakh kilometers and it just works so nicely so i'm purposely riding towards a side where i can stretch it a bit i don't want to stretch it on a nice road Is it underpowered? No, it is not. It's adequate. Of course, as compared to the 390, you will feel this is slow, but it is not underpowered. It has loads of torque. It has a very nice surge up until like five, six thousand RPM. Post which the torque sort of reduces. So, yeah, you don't really feel it that much. But till about six thousand RPM, it's just such a nice surge of power. I love the way the chain sounds in this. You know, you have that helicopter kind of a sound. I don't know. I feel that. I'm not sure if the camera can actually capture it. The mic is that chick 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 that that kind of a sound. I'm quite tempted to tour on this. maybe not a very long one because on the highways i'll be super bored what do you think 
drop a comment let me know you want to see a video of me touring on this stretching it 7000 rpm 8000 rpm yeah red line <laughs> and yet we can't hit 100 so easily <laughs> actually we can i just have to start revving it from lower gears now in second let's see rev it It's funny how quickly we get used to stuff. Like I'm so used to the adventure now. I was actually looking for the sixth gear in this one, <laughs> whereas this has only five. Oh man, this is a nice motorcycle. I'm happy that back in those days, my brother had the wisdom and the money <laughs> to buy this. <laughs> and no intent to ride it so i got it so yeah i'm i'm happy this is definitely going to stay with me for an eternity and the suspension is so soft wow this feels so smooth so the reserve light is blinking but that doesn't mean that the motorcycle is on reserve because there is a manual switch with which i can uh, keep it on main or off or reserve so once the bike starts to jerk is when i will know that it has come to reserve I just flick the switch up and then i have about 30 to 35 kilometers before i refuel or before i run out of petrol and i'm extremely happy i have this motorcycle and i'm happy for those who have this motorcycle as well but i feel sad for those who have sold it so what's the mileage that i get on this well no matter what i do no matter how i get it tuned it doesn't return me more than 30 to 31 kilometers highway cities whatever I think it's down to the carburetor because uh, I feel uh, there's something wrong with the carb. It's it's old, of course. So um, and sometimes even um, a bit of black smoke also comes out, which actually means that uh, it's bad fueling, right? It's not bad fuel. It's basically bad fueling. Oh, oh, Mister. So yeah that's why I'm, I sometimes consider that I should just restore it once and for all new carb new brakes new everything except the speedometer because I don't like the yellow dial speedometers this is very nice subtle note not too loud I think after this particular variant Hero Honda and eventually Hero just kept making it worse Well it's not just my personal opinion I think a lot of people who own Charisma's will agree with this one point Look at this it had monograms the Charisma was a monogram and it had very little stickers to shout about anything The next variant that they came out with they replaced the Charisma monogram with a sticker There was Hero Honda written in front over here which was moved back and the premium sport sticker which is on the back cowl was moved there so that was the second iteration the third one under hero honda was the charisma r i that's when i started losing it for charisma everything was okay i mean the paint job was fine everything was okay but that cowl the engine guard that they put it was just so out of place for all the colors even on black it, i mean the shape itself just not, did not did not match the profile of the motorcycle This was so much better. This was a proper 
I mean, it has it 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 had lines which just you know which which are just flowing, and suddenly they put that engine guard or whatever that nonsense was, and I don't know, I just lost it for it. And the next variant, I like the sticker job that they did with the charisma R. Yeah, I think that was a charisma R. Yes, uh, I like the stickers, and I particularly liked the clear lens indicators because before that it was all amber. and that's when i changed mine to clear lens no that's not when i changed i mean eventually i changed to those uh, lenses because i think that just makes it a little look a little bit more modern and premium the ambers are age old yeah and the next iteration was i think uh, the new shape of charisma i know then there was a zmr Yeah, the ZMR was okay. They just ruined the rear part of the motorcycle, is what I felt, uh, with all those cuts and crevices and making it wider at the body level, and then eventually tapering to a 100 by 90 section wheel, which was sort of like very disproportionate. And even the exhaust on that did not look that well. Whereas these exhausts are just absolutely mind blowing. Just look at them. I mean, they they look like a Gatling gun. and next iteration onwards i don't even want to talk about it it's just just rubbish something in the front something else in the rear they tried to copy the buell from the front and that pointy rear of the motorcycle with a sort of a bar tail lamp sticking out it is like everything was like you know just mix and match and hodgepodge of everything but this one it looked so proportionate from front to back up to down it all looked like it was seamless it was made by one person rather than you know like 100 people designing 400 different things i would have dropped him if he had a helmet but uh, sorry i can't take a third party liability so yeah that's that about uh, my charisma and all charismas and my opinion and my experiences but i love this motorcycle man i'm so happy i'm riding it today after so long mr why So let me end this vlog here, and uh, let me know if you guys have any questions regarding the charisma. In my ability, whatever I know, I shall answer them with whatever knowledge I have. And if you have a charisma, you have to, have to, have to drop a comment. Let me know what your thoughts and feelings are about the charisma. See, I don't mean to hurt anybody's emotions with the with my opinions of the newer models, but yeah, that's what it is. From where I have seen charisma. So yeah eventually it all boils down to what we like so don't let other people's opinion bog you down Mr Nimble I shall call him Mr Nimble <laughs> So that's it guys. I hope you all have a good one and uh, subscribe to the channel because uh, one of the videos you will see how my stupidity led to this. Till then take care. Bye bye.